will I have grand status in life? Grand, 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 grand status. Will I be a celebrity? <laughs> what kind of status will I have in society? These are questions which are flooded in astrology channels. Of course, these questions are asked by people who are already having a very uh, good career or a good profession and they want to know if they will become a millionaire or a billionaire. Well, of course, the first thing you need to know is as in case of medicine, every patient is an individual and requires unique analysis from a doctor. So similarly, when you talk of astrology, the same principle applies. We need to check the chart specifically. Only then we can say. But if I talk on a general perspective, there are many indications which we get from the chart itself. But before we discuss about those indications, you need to know two fundamental things. Without which, even if you have these indications, it will be of no use. All right? So the first indication is, of course, the presence of uh, all these things in the horoscope which we will discuss, which means the, the chart is very strong. And the second factor is the person has very good dashas. So when I say very good dashas, I mean Vimshotri dasha, especially the Mahadashas. So for example, imagine a person has uh, five exceptionally great planets, but the remaining four planets are not that great. And imagine that... Uh, among the four, the three planets are Jupiter, Saturn, and Mercury. And if you imagine that at the age of 25, this person starts his Jupiter Mahadasha. So then what happens? 16 years Jupiter, not that great. 19 years Saturn, even worse. 17 years Mercury. That's it. End of the story. Like 40, 50 years of professional life and then that ends. Okay. So... <clears throat> Now, we need to understand that these dashas, to become very fam famous, these dashas have to start coming near around in your 20s. Not necessarily, it can come in your 30s, 40s, 50s or even in your teens. But 20s is a period when people have a really, uh, have a re reasonably good understanding of the world and around 25-ish a person starts working. So... If after 25, the person has back-to-back -back good dashas, good mahadashas, only then there is exceptional success, okay? So if a person has only one good dasha and then uh, the next dasha is average, then that success continues, but there is nothing new and there is a stagnation, okay? And if there's uh, downfall, then the person has downfall, okay? After a good dasha, if the next dasha is bad. So therefore, you need to understand first the chart and then the dashas and then of course good transits but transits are not very important but dashas and the overall chart is very important so now once you know this about stardom what are some of the things which can give stardom to a person and well i would also love to know from you what do you think could give uh, stardom to a person what combinations and placements in a chart have you seen in yourself and in your neighbors colleagues friends family members please Write it down in the comments. I would love to know from you what do you think about this. All right. And as usual, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And for personalized career consultations, you can always go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. So the first indication, the, 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 the first indication of grand success in life. <laughs> What is the first indication? What could be the first indication? None other than a strong Lagna Lord. See, what is Lagna Lord? Lagna Lord shows your willpower and your focus. When you continue to focus on one area of life consistently over a period of time, then you do something substantial in that area. And because of that, people want to uh, have your time, which means you are famous. Okay. Otherwise, not. So, the first thing is very, very, very strong Lagnesh. So, now, when, when, when I say very strong Lagnesh, I mean a Lagna Lord, well-placed, either in Kendra or Trikon, by house, in the Bhava chart, and also in a reasonable good dignity, either in a friend sign or own sign or Multricon or exalted. Which means, if you have a exalted Lagnesh in Dustan, 
or a debilitated lagnesh in the 10th, it may not work. So we need to see 1st, 4th, 7th, 10th or 5th or 9th. And the dignity also should be either friend sign or own sign, Muzrigon or exhortation. If two factors are there, then you know the person has a strong lagna lord, which means the person can focus. What is the second parameter? The second parameter is you have a very strong Mercury. Why Mercury? Mercury is the Karaka of the 10th house. The 10th house is also the Karaka for, the, for skill. Because Mercury actually tells us how should we do things in life. So therefore, if you have a very strong Mercury, especially in the 10th or in the 11th or in Kendra in good dignity, then you have the capacity to learn very fast. You have the capacity to understand, to, um, to grasp things and you can know when to do what and when not to do what. So Mercury is very important. Then the third, the third parameter is very, very, very important, which means you need to have some connection of the 10th house along with the trinal houses. What does this mean? So it means the 10th house should have some connection with the 5th or the 9th. So which means the 10th lord and the 5th lord could be sitting together anywhere. Or the 10th lord, 9th lord could be sitting anywhere together. Or the 10th lord is uh, being aspected by the 9th lord or the 5th lord. Now why is this important? Because the 10th house is the house of name fame. But for exceptional name fame, you need some great karma. You cannot just do it by yourself. It's not possible. You, you may not like to hear it, but it just doesn't work like that. You must have some great pious karma from the past. Only then you can be exceptionally famous. Okay. I'm not talking of normal fame. I'm talking of exceptional fame. Okay. So this means the Lakshmi Sthan, which is the fifth or the ninth, which shows the blessings of Lord Narayan manifesting through Lakshmi, is there with the tenth Lord which is very, 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 very critical, okay? So if the 5th or the ninth has some association with the 10th house, then the person will get favorable things in life externally for advancing in profession. And therefore, his or her success, the chances of uh, his success increases uh, exponentially, okay? So then number fourth parameter, ex extremely important. Hear this carefully, otherwise you made a mistake with this. So, you need a strong Saturn connected to the Artha houses. Strong Saturn connected to the Artha houses. Which means, which are the Artha houses? The 2nd, 6th, 10th, 11th. Now, why Saturn? Now, generally they say, if Saturn is aspecting a particular house or a particular lord, lord of a particular house, then it is bad. Okay? Which is not correct. So, what happens is, when Saturn is aspecting a particular house or a particular planet or lord of a house, then the person needs to do a lot of hard work in regards to that, ho that house. So now when the person does hard work, then what happens is the person will know the ins and outs because he has seen all the extremes. So because of that, when Saturn is linked with the Artha houses in a good dignity, then what happens is the person gets to know the ins and outs of a particular profession or a particular work. And because of that, the person can navigate extreme scenarios, worst case scenarios, average scenarios, best case scenarios. But now if Saturn is associated with the second, sixth or tenth, but in a bad dignity, which means Saturn is in a bad uh, sign for Saturn, then it can mean that the person is just going on struggling in life. Uh, but there is no uh, there's no success because the person is unable to come out and uh, actually grasp what is important so saturn not only has to aspect or be associated with the lords of the earth houses but it also has to be in a good dignity a saturn in a good dignity can finally bring you out of things because of your higher knowledge so this is this is this is with saturn okay so then the next thing Number six, I guess. <laughs> Number six is presence of good Jupiter and Venus. Or at least one of them, Jupiter or Venus. Why do I say this? Because 
Jupiter and Venus, they are the natural Karakas for awards, recognitions, um, prize, gifts and all this. Okay. So now, of course, you will only get all this uh, if you perform well in your career or in some work. But the problem is, even if you have a great chart, but if you have a bad Jupiter Venus, if both are very badly placed, then you may be the best person in the job or in your profession, but you may not get recognition. Okay, so there are, there are two things. One thing is you are good at your job, which is seen from Saturn Mercury. It's like literally the work. And the other thing is, will you get recognition? So for that, you need Jupiter and Venus or at least one of them. So if both are well-placed, you are exceptionally fortunate. So if Jupiter and Venus are both well-placed, the person will get a lot of recognition in life. Even if that person does not do anything exceptionally great. Yes, that's how these planets are. They are great. They are the greatest benefit. So they always bless. Okay. The next thing which is very important. Number seven. Number seven, 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 seven. What is seven? Seven in numerology. Why? Now, when I say seven, what do I mean? Seven means three things. Either you have the number seven in your date of birth anywhere. So, for example, you are born on uh, 7th March in any year or you are born in July or you are born in 1987, 97, 67, 2007, 2017, whatever. So, this is one possibility. The second possibility is your basic number is 7, which means either you are born on 7th or 16th or 25th, any month, any year. So, then your basic number becomes 7. Or your destiny number is 7, which means you add your complete date of birth, you get 7. Okay, so I'll repeat. Either you have 7 anywhere in your date of birth or just the sum of your day alone, which is 7, 25th or 16th or your destiny number. That is 7. Okay, <clears throat> so 7 in numerology is the number of luck. So if you have the number of luck, then you are very fortunate. This is something... Similar to your 10th Lord having link with the 5th and 9th as we discussed before. You can find so many famous personalities. They will always have 7. You know, almost all politicians, cricketers, uh, film stars, they will have 7. All, all, all the time you can see. You go and check that uh, date of birth for anybody. You check uh, PM Narendra Modi's chart. He has 7. He's born on 17th. So you check uh, Shah Rukh Khan's chart. Uh, the date of birth, his destiny number is 7. So you, you go and check anybody. Okay, You will find 7. Akshay Kumar has 7. Uh, Shilpa Shetty has 7. So many. You know, Karishma Kapoor has 7. So many. You, you, you I can just name it and you will find it. Okay. Now, of course, uh, that also has to be supported by other things in the chart, of course. But you need to have 7. So now, if you have 7, you are extremely fortunate because 7 shows all the great things coming from the uh, past okay then what is the number eight thing the number eight thing is a very strong fourth house why do i say fourth house because fourth house is the house which tells you how do you take things in life if the fourth house is not good you will get into depression because fourth house is the house of comfort so when the fourth house is good what it does is it gives us one of the two things. So when the fourth house is good, if you have a bad event in your life, you are fired from your job or you are bankrupt or you have some bad accident, then what happens is you, you don't get into depression. You realize that, oh, this is temporary and one day I'll get back. I'll bounce back. But if the fourth house is not good, you'll get into depression. And if you get success and you have a bad fourth house, you'll become very arrogant, very egoistic. And you will also become lazy because you feel you are the best. Okay. But if you have a strong fourth house and you have success, you will be happily dissatisfied with your last success. Okay. So therefore, a good fourth house will give you good balance in life. Okay. Not to go into extremes. Otherwise, sometimes you will see people, they become famous overnight and then they sign some contracts with somebody. And then after two years, they just vanish. They disappear. So a good fourth house will give you great consistency. Okay, so do not forget the fourth house. Very, very, very important. And of course, the, the last thing, number nine, uh, maybe we'll discuss 10. 
So number ninth, again, is a very strong Mars related to either the Lagna or the 10th house or even the 11th house. Why? Because Mars is the planet which tells you how long you will fight. And to be extremely successful, you need to fight. Just having a good Mercury is not enough. Okay, just having uh, a good Saturn is not enough. Good Mercury gives you knowledge. Good Saturn gives you tolerance. But Mars gives you that ability to fight. Okay, you have to fight the cutthroat competition and move ahead in life if you want extraordinary success. Otherwise, it is all, uh, you, you won't be able to fight. You may have good knowledge. You may have good uh, consistency but if you cannot fight with your enemies you, your competitors you will not be able to get ahead of them they they will uh, surpass you and they'll go ahead okay so therefore very very important very strong mars with a lagna 10th or 11th then you will see this impact in a professional sense okay strong mars strong mars means either in aries scorpio capricorn Preferably one of the three, okay? <clears throat> and what is the last? The last indicator and very, 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 very important, which is always missed, is a good Navamsha chart. Because the Navamsha chart shows you what talents have you brought from your past life. So if the Navamsha is very strong, it means you will be able to use all of your talents or majority of your talents for uh, gains in life. And gains in life primarily come through the profession. So therefore, the D9 and also uh, this is like the last bonus tip, a great D10. The D10 will show your literal circumstances. Okay, so D9 is the last answer and the bonus tip is the D10. Okay, so therefore, analyze the D9 to see what you can do in your profession and analyze the D10 to see what kind of work you will have to do inevitably in this material world. All right. So now I know you have seen all this, you have heard, and now you are interested to comment. Oh, this person didn't have this, 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 this person didn't have this, 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 but still he was successful. Well, of course, there are a thousand indications, okay, of grand success. These are just 10 or 11. So don't think these are all in all. And if you don't have any one of them, don't think that you will never be successful, okay? And that is why I requested you, please comment down. I would like to see what have you seen in your life all right thank you so much once again and if you like this video hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new and for consultations of your website uh, your horoscope you can always go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him thank you